Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a table runner. A table runner with prairie points all around the outside. And this is made using charm squares. I have all of these beautiful squares. These are from Hoffman. They're five inch squares. These have batiks and print mixed. And all we need is two packages or 80 squares. So grab your squares and let's get started sewing. I'm gonna use these pre-cut packages because they come with such a nice variety of prints. But you can cut your own. It's real easy to cut five inch squares. Of course, the only problem with these pre-cuts is they come all folded up. So we do want to iron them nice and flat. If I can even get it open. We're gonna iron all of these nice and flat before we get started. We are going to take 33 of these squares to make the table runner top. It's going to be three by 11 rows. So I'm gonna just start laying these out and spread out the colors and not worry too much about what goes where. But I like to have the colors kind of balanced. I just don't wanna to get too, too picky about it. So I'm not gonna to wanna to put that there or even really close to it. I'll put that farther down. So lay your pieces three rows by 11. Once you have the runner top laid out the way you like it, you wanna pick up the rows in order so you don't get anything mixed up when you're sewing them together. So here's how I like to do it. I am going to put these Row, the row one, row one here, almost on top of itself. So I've got them staggered just a little bit. And I'm going to put one pin in here. Then I'm going to pick up the next row and put two pins. And I'm going to pick up the last row and put three pins. And that will help me remember how to get these sewn together correctly. Here's another method I use to keep my rows in order. This one here, that was the top row right right corner then we've got the middle and then we've got the bottom so you can take these stickers these are just avery stickers they come right off so i will often label my stuff like this because i know i can get it off and that way if i get interrupted and i can't remember what my pins signif signified i can still get everything sewed correctly I'm going to work with just one row at a time. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna leave the sticker on. If you're not using stickers and you're just using pins, unpin the row, but put the pins back into this patch so you know where it's gonna go. So this is gonna be on the far right. That means I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and I'm gonna start with these two here. So I'm just gonna make one whole row using quarter inch seams. And then we'll make the next row and the next row, and then we'll iron all of them with the seams going in opposite directions. So I'm not gonna worry about the seam allowances right now at all. I'm just gonna sew all the blocks together. So I'm just gonna set this row aside, and I'm gonna go on to the next row. Again, take those pins out and repin them in just this single piece. And then, see, I can flip this over, and that's going to be the first piece. And all these others are already right sides facing down, which is how we want them. So this process goes quite quickly. Here's all the rows sewn together. Now I'm simply going to iron the seam allowances on the bottom row all to my left. So we can just push these all to one side and I'm gonna keep the row straight. It's kind of lined up on the bottom edge. It's lined up parallel to the bottom edge of my cutting, of my ironing board. 
And once they're all facing that way, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to slide it down this way because that makes those seam allowances, they're facing that way. So this is making sure they're laying nice and flat. And then I'm gonna steam press it. Now I'm gonna avoid, I'm gonna avoid ironing the sticker here because that might make it too sticky. Right now it comes off pretty easily. Now, since the seam allowances on this row are facing that way, we want to iron these seams facing the opposite direction. So I'm going to flip this over, but this time I'm going to want to iron all the seams in this direction. So if you're good with your left hand, you can take it down here, hold it a little bit tight, and they will just lay all to one side very quickly. Then again, we'll flip it over and steam it. Now the last row, it's going to be the same as the first row. So see, these guys are facing that way. So we want these seams facing that way. I've got all three rows here and I've made sure I've got them in the right order. So I'm going to put this one aside for now and we're going to stitch these two together. Now, since we have all of our seams ironed going in opposite directions, it's going to stitch up really flat and it's going to be really easy to match those intersections. You can pin if you like, but you can usually feel with your finger if everything is matched up there. Now when that stitching is done, it really will help if you finger press this seam. So we're just going to press it to one side. So I'm just opening with my hands and drawing my fingernail. You can use your fingertips if you want, right down that seam. It makes the ironing for the next, it makes this the next step, which is ironing, makes it go easier if you finger pressed it first. Because we ironed each row and then we finger pressed these seams, it's laying really flat. I haven't even ironed it yet, but it's really nice and flat. Now, I've got everything in the right position, so I'm going to take off my tags, take out my pins, and then we will steam press it, because even though it's laying pretty flat, we want it extra flat. Now that the runner top is all done, we're going to make the prairie points. So these are just made with the iron. You take a five inch square, Fold it on its diagonal, wrong sides together, and then fold it one more time. And that's all we have to do for each one of these squares. It goes really fast, and it'll make a really cute decorative edge for our table runner. All the prairie points are done, so we're going to move them over next to the runner here. And we're going to pin these on. So they're already in a pleasing color scheme here. I just picked them up as they came. So I'm not going to do much switching around unless I get the exact same print. So I'm going to pin this on the edge here with the point pointing towards that corner. And that one's gonna get pinned on. Then I'm gonna go to the far corner and I'm gonna pin another one on in the very corner here. Then I'm going to take my long ruler here. See how far I've got. I think I've got about 45 inches. So I'm gonna put the point of each prairie point three inches away. So I want them overlapped a little bit. So this is gonna go three inches away. The next one, three more inches. And the only time I'm gonna switch up squares or points is if I get one that's exactly that color. So I probably won't put this one right there. But other than that, I'm just gonna take them in the order that they come in, lining up the edges right along the edge of the runner. Now this last point is going to go here pointing at the six, but I want to tuck it under this guy. So 
each one of these is overlapping. And I don't care which way it's facing. I don't care if it's got the single fold this way or the double fold. It doesn't matter to me, but I just want them all evenly three inches apart. Now I'm going to pin it and I'm going to stay stitch along just this one side a little less than a quarter inch. I just want these all anchored in place. So I'm going to put one pin in every point. Take it to the machine. And it's really easiest if you work with just one side at a time. So I'm going to make sure that's pointing towards the corner of this square and I'm lining everything up and I'm using slightly less than a quarter inch. I just want to get everything anchored in place. So I'm going to straighten up all the edges as I go and make sure they're all lined up. Now we will go and do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to start at the opposite corner this time and work my way that way. So they will be overlapped like this. And if your runner turns out a little bit shorter or longer, it's no big deal. You can slide these down or a little bit closer. I just find that if you measure it and divide back by whatever number of points you want to do, you can get them kind of evenly spaced. But if they're not perfect, it's really not that big a deal. Both of the long sides are done, and now we just need to do these short sides. So let's we're going to put this one right up against that guy there. And we are going to put, let's try a green one here. This one right up against that guy. And I think we'll have room for three more there. So let's get some colors we haven't used. And let's measure these, see if they're about three inches. I think they are. So this one's going to go here, and this one's going to go here. And let me tuck them the way I want them tucked here. So I want I think I want it the other way. I want these ones going over. Yep. Now we'll do the same thing at the far end. Just one more side and we will be ready to put the batting and backing on. Now we need to pick out a backing and we need something that will look good against all those prairie points. So let's go down to the retail store. Since this is made of batiks and print, I think I'm going to use one of our more solid looking batiks. The pink would be really, really nice. I like the pink. Let's see if we've got a blue. Let's see if we've got a nice blue that would look good. Um, that would work. That would be really pretty. I think I actually like the blue the best. Yeah, let's go with that one. For this runner, we're going to do what we call a flip finish. So we're going to put everything right sides together. We're going to stitch around the outside edge here, and we're going to flip it right side out. So I cut the backing and the batting about 54 by 16 inches, so it's just a little bit bigger than my top here. And the top is right sides down. All these prairie points are tucked right in, and I'm just going to pin around the edges so nothing moves. Now I'm going to stitch through all the layers. So that's where our prairie points are inside there. So I'm going to stitch right inside that stitching that we just did when we put the prairie points on. I'm going to stitch all the way around, but I'm going to leave about an eight inch opening. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to back tack because I don't want my stitching coming out. And I'm going a little bit bigger than a quarter inch just inside the previous stitching. I pivoted at all the corners and I'm coming around to where I started again. So 
here is where I started. I don't like to leave too big of an opening because it can get hard to close, but I want to be able to get my hand in there easily. So I'm going to stop sewing about here. And again, back tack right there. Now we're going to trim off the excess batting and backing, even with the top. I usually use scissors for this step, but if you want to put it on your cutting board and use your blade, you can. We also want to trim some of this extra bulk off here, so I'm going to trim close to but not through my stitching where I put it front to back. So do that on every corner. Now find your opening and just reach between the front and the back to the far end and grab some and just pull it right side out. Now it's all right side out, but it's looking kind of lumpy. So just put your hand back inside poke out the corners a little bit. And these will lay flat because we'll be able to pull on those prairie points. And then go to the far end again. Just poke it out with your finger a little bit. There's tools that you can use to help poke this out, but it, it does lay pretty flat because we trimmed that extra bulk. Now just grab it by the prairie points and give it a little shake and start smoothing it out. It lays flat very easily because there's a lot of bulk in the edge here and those seam allowances all want to make it lay flat. So I'm going to smooth it out here, then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to smooth it from the back side. And look at how nice those colors look against that batik. So I'm just hand pressing it. The weight and the heat of my hands will make this nice and flat. We need to close up the opening here. So I've got the backing folded and that is going to meet just beyond that stitching. And I'm gonna stitch this on the sewing machine. You can whip stitch it by hand. There's some products you can use to iron this close, but I'm gonna just put this under the machine and do a very narrow stitch. All right, it's all closed up and you can barely see that. We used matching thread and it just mixes right in. I'm going to just do the simplest quilting possible on this. I'm going to stitch in the ditch along all of these seams here. Now, if you can free motion quilt, you can go ahead and do whatever design you like. You can even put this on your long arm. You can pin the prairie points on and then you can have the long arm quilted. But I really don't want to take away from any of the patchwork. I just want to get everything anchored down so that if we wash it, nothing will come apart. So to go in the ditch, I am just getting my needle as close as possible to that seam. And just go slow and careful all the way down. Because it's got the batting in there, the the ditch goes down and it kind of hides, so you can't see it. And the fabrics can just, the fabrics can just be showing and not the stitching this way. This was such a fun runner to make. The concept is so simple. So simple you might even think, I, I want to do something more complex, but the look of it is just very satisfying. I really like shaped runners, something that has a little bit around the edge on my table. I think it looks really good. And this one, it's actually reversible. So if you are doing a fancy floral centerpiece, you might want to put that on this side. You've still got all the prints around the edge and you can see my quilting here. It's just in these parallel lines. It went really fast. I don't think you can tell that I am near the ditch and not in the ditch in some places. Now the prairie points, we used the charm squares in all the different fabrics, but if you wanted to frame it with just one or two fabrics, you could just alternate colors. You wouldn't have to put all these different colors on it. But this is really a fun runner. This would be great if you're going to someone's house for dinner and you want to make them a small gift. Table runners are just perfect because this is a happy summery one, but you can make them for any season. They're just totally ver versatile 
and they don't take up any room. So the recipient doesn't have to think of, where am I gonna put this in my house? Where am I gonna store it? So here's all the numbers you need. I used 33 of the five inch charms in the top, and it's a three by 11 block patchwork. The prairie points, I used 40 of them all around the edge. So I used a total of 72 charms, the backing, 16 by 54, batting the same size, and it finished about 17 by 52 inches. Really a fun, fast project. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the Prairie Point Runner. So let's see what you guys can come up with with your charm squares. Send us pictures. We want to see your projects. Happy quilting.